the sheer f***ing hubris of Star Trek writers today. All right, interwebs. Hello and welcome to my channel. Obviously, that opening bit was just a joke. I, I don't hate the Star Trek writers. I just actually wanted to have a discussion with you today about something that I kind of missed when it came up earlier in this season of Star Trek Picard, but has cropped up again because the Admiral that swears a lot has uh, come back on the latest episode of Star Trek Picard, uh, Broken Pieces, Episode 8. And so a lot of people are talking about, again, whether or not Star Trek Picard and Star Trek in general should have swearing in it and really getting at a more fundamental question of should Star Trek be a family friendly show at all times or can it be something that just aims to garner an adult audience with its specific series like Star Trek Picard and Star Trek Discovery both featuring swearing. And also, Michael Chabon, the writer of Star Trek Picard, one of the head writers and uh, showrunner of season one of Star Trek Picard, has chimed in on this issue. And so I figured it was something that I should address and talk about because I think I have a unique take and idea on it about what it means for Star Trek in current modern TV landscape and its sort of shifting place in the modern TV landscape. Just to give background on what people are saying if you haven't heard these uh, discussions about swearing in Star Trek, both Star Trek Picard and Star Trek Discovery have featured the F word in their uh, respective seasons of the show. Star Trek Discovery did it in season one. I think maybe in season two as well, a little less so I don't remember it specifically, but Star Trek Picard has definitely featured a lot of swearing and most egregiously and most noticeably when the uh, Admiral in episode two of Star Trek Picard basically said the sheer f hubris to, to Picard. And then again in episode eight, she basically told him to shut the f up were her exact words. And there have been other swears here and there from different characters throughout the, the series this season so far. And a lot of people found this to be, number one, egregious because Star Trek had always been a show that was fairly family friendly, that, you know, anyone in any age group could sit down and watch it and enjoy it and not have to worry about there being too many dark themes in the show that would be sort of what parents would see as sort of hard for kids. Now, to address that just a little bit, the, uh, the moving target of what is a family friendly has always been somewhat shifting. I mean, for example, just simply showing queer people on Star Trek. Uh, I remember Deep Space Nine, the episode where Jadzia Dax kisses a woman, was given a mature rating just because she kisses a woman. Which we now, you know, as a society today, I think we fairly understand that just because there are queer people in a thing does not make something adult. You know, just because queer people exist does not mean it's sexual themed or adult themed. I mean, we show straight people kissing all the time. And so why does it have to be adult when two women kiss each other or two men kiss each other? So, but that was considered a family issue back in the day. And even today is still somewhat, uh, unfortunately, uh, talked about in that way at certain times by certain groups. So the moving target of what's family friendly is always somewhat nebulous, but I think generally most people agree that swearing generally does put things into a not family friendly zone that people don't really want their kids swearing. I mean, my parents did that to me. They wouldn't let me see things that had swearing or sexual themes in it uh, overall. So I think we can generally agree on that point, but I do want to make it known that not all parents and not all people agree that simply swearing is an adult only topic. Some kids, uh, some parents, some people, and maybe even myself included a little bit, think that, you know, allowing kids a wide vocabulary is not inherently a bad thing as long as you teach them that words have weight and certain words have weight. Uh, and there are certain places for certain words. I don't necessarily think swear words are all bad. That saying the F word isn't necessarily a bad thing or a taboo thing or shows a limited mind or sort of limited vocabulary, limited ability of speech. I just think it's part of the vocabulary and using swear words allows us to show emphasis at times. It allows us to put power behind words. It actually allows us to have variety of meaning and uh, uh, declaration within a sentence. And I think Star Trek Picard used it really, really well, uh, for example, in episode two, where the Admiral said sheer f hubris of Picard. It shocked us. It uh, surprised us. It uh, made us be like, oh, Picard is being really, it does have a lot of hubris in this scene and is kind of being really full of himself. And it made us think about that. I mean, having that line in there made that a topic of conversation and exemplified the themes that the writers wanted us to show, wanted uh, us to see in that scene. So clearly it worked. And the shock value and emphasis of the F word em emphasized that fact. And so I think that there can be power and use and good use of the F word and swear words in general for that matter. However, a lot of the time, I will agree that there are times in the use of Star Trek that the swears just happen to be there just because, you know, now we can swear. 
you know, we're a streaming show. We're not, you don't have to deal with the censorship of a cable TV show that old Star Trek shows had to deal with in the past. And now they're just kind of there to be there. And I think Michael Chabon actually said something really interestingly about that argument of things. And I'll, I'll sort of say his words here in case people missed it. He posted this on his Instagram a few weeks ago after Star Trek episode, Picard episode two aired. Listen, no human society will ever be perfect because no human will ever be perfect. The most we can do, and as Star Trek ever reminds us, must do is aspire to perfection and work to make it so. Until the impossible day, sh** is going to continue to happen, and when it does, humans are going to want to swear. The absence of swear words in Star Trek was never a matter of Federation principle. It was a matter of FCC rules. Writers of previous areas had no ch eras had no choice. They were censored. Swearing is one of humanity's most ancient, sensible, and reliable consolations. Personally, I consider any society that discouraged, banned, or abandoned the use of curse words to be a f***ing dystopia. So, basically, he has strong words about saying, like, look, like I said before, using swear words allows emphasis. It allows for a variety of meaning. And it was actually a bad thing that FCC didn't allow Star Trek to use these swear words in the past. And so this is actually rectifying a wrong in that regard. And I... I actually kind of agree with them. Now, I do think the overuse of them kind of limits their impact when they do want to have them to have an impact. But generally, I think having swear words in Star Trek isn't a big deal. And I kind of agree with Michael Chabon on, on that matter. However, I do want to just kind of circle back to the last, my last point, and circle back to the point that I made at the top of the video, which was... Should Star Trek be a more family-friendly show? And by having swear words, clearly some people are going to think that they can't share it with their family. And as I kind of hinted at, I think that this speaks to what Star Trek is going to become moving forward in the, in the modern era of Trek. And that is, Star Trek is going to become a much more segmented franchise. And what do I mean by that? I mean that we see a lot of Star Trek shows coming out in the near future. We have, you know, Star Trek Discovery and Star Trek Picard going on right now. And then we have uh, Star Trek Lower Decks, which is an animated show, kind of uh, Rick and Morty style, aimed at slightly more adult but slightly younger audiences, like, um, you know, teens to early 20s is sort of the main target audience they stated. And then Nickelodeon's show as well, which will be a younger Star Trek um, show, which will be aimed at even younger, like, um, you know, teens to even younger, like 13, 14, 15 year old Star Trek fans and bringing them in there. And so Star Trek now is going to be basically, as many franchises are doing, having much more niche segmented audiences. We're going to have this show for adults, this show for kids, and this show for people in between. And maybe the Star Trek Pike show, if that ever gets picked up, would be the show that family friendly, that would be for everyone, could watch that show. But, you know, not every Star Trek show is going to be made for every person. Now, someone like me, huge Star Trek fan, I'm going to watch every single Star Trek show, every single episode, and talk about it and review it and dissect it to pieces. But that's not going to be the case with general audiences. General audiences are going to find their different shows and focus on it, and they're not going to see everything. I mean, we saw that before in Star Trek, where, like, some people would watch Next Generation and Voyager, but wouldn't necessarily watch Deep Space Nine because they thought it was darker or wasn't to their taste. And that's perfectly fine. General audiences and audiences are... Uh, allowed to have different preferences and tastes as they move about the video landscape. I mean, that's just, unfortunately, fortunately or unfortunately, a matter of, you know, how streaming and television works, and even more so today with more and more niche shows. So I think having a show that sort of states its place as an adult-only show or adults-focused show, I think that that's perfectly fine. And I think we as Star Trek fans haven't been trained to that as much because one, we're used to Star Trek kind of being a show for all audience and having a broad audience uh, focus because Next Generation, Users 9, Voyager, Enterprise, they were all kind of shows that were, you know, while they did have certain target audiences, were kind of trying to get everyone in. Uh, Enterprise probably maybe skewing a bit younger because it was trying to get be hip for the kids with all of its sex and stuff, but generally it was trying to hit everybody and, and kind of get that broad appeal. And Star Trek Picard, maybe, and Star Trek Discovery having more adult themes, and even they have, like, sexual themes of, like, uh, you know, rape and things like that, especially on Discovery. Maybe that was a bit of a bad foot to start off on, that maybe they should have started off on a more family-friendly show, because that would sort of train us and allow us to, like, feel okay with going to more niche audiences before we get, like, the more adult Star Trek show and the kids show. Um, but, you know, so maybe starting Star Trek Picard off as the adult show is a bit off-putting because we haven't been trained as franchise audiences yet, but... This is something that pretty much a lot of franchises are doing. And I think you see in Star Wars, where Star Wars, because Disney in general has is a family-friendly brand, they do have segmented parts. Like Star Wars 
animated shows like Star Wars Resistance is definitely for kids, and most adult Star Wars fans don't watch it except for the hardcore of hardcore. Like myself, I watch every episode of Star Wars Resistance, even though it's definitely for kids. And then, like, something like The Mandalorian is much for, you know, older audiences. Again, it's not as egregious. They don't have as much swearing, but there's definitely a lot more violence and darker tones to it than most. And again, I think the fact that it's, you know, not going as dark is more Disney as a brand rather than, like, you know, the streaming landscape and them keeping it that way. So I, I honestly just think that this this evolution of swearing in Star Trek, while probably a bit egregious at times, I certainly agree, I think it's used properly uh, to certain effect in certain scenes, and I think it's not horrible for Star Trek to have swearing in it. And I also just think that it's kind of just naturally part of what Star Trek has to evolve into to be a franchise that sort of gets a bunch of different audiences in this day and age. Again, us hardcore Trekkies will probably notice it more because... We're going to watch every Star Trek thing. You and I, you know, the people who are sitting here watching my Star Trek videos, you're probably, you know, a decent chunk of you, I would assume, are probably going to end up watching the Star Trek Nickelodeon show because you just want to consume every Star Trek thing. But you have to be aware of that, you know, there are people out there that are just watching Star Trek and just kind of pick it up as they go along. And we'll pick the shows that find interest to them. Like my parents, they didn't watch Star Trek Discovery. They didn't find it all that interesting to them. That's cool. But my dad got into Star Trek Picard, which... He's now super interested in and finds it fascinating, but he probably won't watch Discovery. And that's just because they're a general audience and just finding the shows that speak to them and having different tones and ideas and, you know, different themes going on in them, you know, is it enables that niche audience appeal to happen. So that's my thought on swearing in Star Trek. What do you think? I'd love to hear all of your thoughts in the comments below. If you want more discussions like this about Star Trek and different ideas in the Star Trek franchise or different geek topics or philosophy on Star Trek and geek topics, please consider giving my channel a subscribe. If you want to help make these videos even better and help me pay for my surgeries that I have or help me do this full time one day, please consider uh, helping me out on Patreon. Every little bit helps. It really truly means the world to me if you go and help on there. But regardless of if you subscribe or give to my Patreon, I'm just glad that you stopped by as always and I hope that you Live long and prosper. And special thanks to my commander level and above Patreons, Eli Bergmoss, Stefan Schuthart, Boyd and Mary Beth Earl, Michael McGee, Lal Lindley, Wellington Marcus, Inar Sigurdsson, Marika Kwiechin, Munir Amlani, Mari Nekar, and Polly Mina.